Good evening. Today is the 14th day of November 2016 in our continuing series, Explorations in Savitri, with our brother Alok Namaskar. We are continuing with Canto 5 of Book 2, the Book of the Traveler of the Worlds. Canto 5 is the Godheads of the Little Life. And we are going to begin on page 165, three lines from the bottom. Before we begin, I'd like to tell you about a letter that Mother wrote to me on Savitri. It was the time when Huta had just completed the paintings of Savitri. And you know that Mother did the sketches for those and then who to fill in the painting. So they were actually mother's sketches. And she wrote to me something that, that, is, that continues today to, to bring such humility to my soul, because mother said, briefly paraphrasing, I would be very happy if you would do the photo, photography for the meditations on savagery, the paintings, because I know that you will make a success of it. Still today, how the Divine Mother could say yeah. this to me. <laughs> this is very interesting. I didn't know this. I think many people didn't know. We just knew the painting part, but <laughs> yeah, and photography is in itself an art. And the first exhibition was given in 1972, I believe. Oh. And when all of the, there were slides, transparencies in those days, nothing digital at that time. We had to use film, had to choose the right film for the, for the paintings. And then they had to be developed. Yes. So it was... Uh, very interesting experience. Uh, used to meet on her balcony, the old where Lajaba yeah, used to live yeah, in that yeah. house, Huta house, I think it was called. And we'd set up everything outside when the day was just perfect. Oh, mother said, if you could spare one day a week or perhaps one hour a day to do the oh. photography. Thanks for sharing this very interesting. Uh, so what I, was, what I was going to say on this on this canto, you know, that we we all have to take a firm position that this will not be us, that mm -hmm. we belong to her, and and only to her, and whatever we have to do, uh, we cannot go down here. We have to lift up our aspiration, our sincerity, our devotion. And we will get to that in just another one or two sessions. Yes. <laughs> you see, uh, what, I am what we are going to read today, because recently there is a lot of talk about the common man. Uh, in India we call it Aam Admi. <laughs> so everybody is concerned about the common man, common man standing in the queues, common man, you know, <laughs> has to do this, has to suffer this, has to... But uh, common man is common because he has chosen to live within an average pitch. He can, if he wishes or wills or aspires with whatever difficulties and challenge, he can rise above his commonality. And the common and average person, a part of it is in all of us, seeking for comfort, seeking for one's own selfish interest, seeking for just my own little nostrum. Mm -hmm. And this is what Sri is reminding us. That's not life. It's, it's not really worth it. There is a very beautiful long essay of Sri the Burjo and the Samurai. Yeah, that points to the same thing. Yeah. That, you know, a person who is satisfied just with food, a rooftop and those things. Simple pleasures of life. Yeah, pleasure. Seeks after them yes. and uh, yes. basically uh, at one place Sri says, his bandit selfishness did a little good. It's uh, not by yeah. choice, it's by default. Yeah. 
some good does take place. He is satisfied with his common average kind. This he is the, uh, you know, when we live at the lower vital level, little life. This is the little life. Yeah. Tomorrow's hopes and his old rounds of thought. Tomorrow's hopes. That's what I was reminded when I was watching the TV screen. That they are not even thinking about the larger interest of a nation or of a greater life. They are interested just in how much money I am going to withdraw tomorrow. Tomorrow's hopes. Yeah. And it's out of a choice. This is something we have to change. No legislation can change it for us. His old familiar interests and desires he has made into a thick and narrowing hedge defending his small life from the invisible. See what a wonderful uh, yeah. you know we talk about defense mechanisms in Freudian psychology mm. where we defend ourselves from the subconscious instincts. But obviously Freud didn't know that there is another kind of defense which we as human beings use. We defend ourselves against the divine invasion because it means that our ego will be gone, its reign will be gone and we have to submit to another authority which is far greater and vaster. Defending his small life from the invisible, his being's kinship to infinity, he has shut away from him into inmost self. Fenced off the greatnesses of hidden God. So we live in the prison of our own making. Shobindo's famous aphorism that I went to a place full of holy men and I got bored in their company. I went to a prison and God made it his twisting ground. So mother comments very beautifully that Shobindo is his own experience where he contrasts that we can be in, with all the luxuries in the world and yet we live in a prison of our consciousness. Whereas we can be in a prison but soar high in a state of freedom. It's not dependent on any, any, any hundred times any underlined outer circumstances. It's purely dependent on our inner poise. And it's given to us even to open windows. Mother at one place says there are many windows that open on to the infinite. Many windows, not one window, one fixed path, one process, one method, technique. Mm. Many windows every day. But we want to fix things into a small little hedge and defend ourselves. Every time something so-called unpleasant happens, even that is a window opening to the infinite. If you look at it, it's a shattering of the ego. There is very interesting, you know, once Amalda was standing in the queue, for mother's darshan and he suddenly, he, we know he had a problem with the leg and he fell down. So later on when he was face to face with the mother, he asked mother, mother why did I fall down? Mother said it was the fall of the ego. Can we imagine a commonplace incident like that Whoa. has such a deep profound meaning for all of us? Every moment we see something, we experience something, it can be a window opening to the infinite. Every experience is a contact with the infinite. You know, you know this old world idea of inner experiences which I have deep within. Fine, that's important. But to somebody who is awake even a little, everything can become a means of entering into the infinite flower. Nature, sky, stars, night, day. From morning till night, we are touched by the infinite in so many ways. So... And and he says a thick and narrowing hedge. Yes. And so imagine a hedge that's so yeah. thick and it <laughs> narrows. Yes. Narrows. Yes. Oh. And that's our little garden. We are so happy in it. Not realizing we have shut off the delight yes. and the greatness is of hidden God. Yes. We have shut. Nobody else has shut us. We have. His being was formed to play a trivial part in a little drama, on a petty stage, in a narrow plot, he has pitched his tent of life beneath the wide gaze of the starry vast. He is the crown of all that has been done. There, there is a lot of, uh, again, irony in it. 
That's yes. <laughs> crown of all that has been done. Man says, I am the peak of nature. So Shubhinder takes a dig at it. The three lines that follow. Yeah. Thus is creation's labor justified. This is the world's result. Nature's last poise is an exclamation mark. Exclamation. <laughs> yeah. Makes us so. wonder, is this really the crown of creation? And if this is so, one has to wonder at the creativity of God. This used to be my question. One of the questions ah. that people say man is the ultimate and crown of creation. I used to say if this is, <laughs> then where is the creativity of the divine? Really, I mean, if man is the crown of creation, then surely he is very uncreative. And yet he thinks he is. You no, know, I, I said I mean, he, if, he, yeah, that's right. He thinks he is. This is his, this thing. But if God cannot create anything better than man, yeah. then his creativity itself is <laughs> doubtful. There has to be something more, something greater. And that's what he says. And if this were all and nothing more were meant, if what now seems where the whole of what must be, look at the beauty of these lines. Yes. If this were not a state through which we pass on our road from matter to eternal self, to the light that made the worlds the cause of things, well might interpret our mind's limited view. So we see now what are those interpretations we, they will follow. But when we stand here at this plane of consciousness, we don't have the total vision. We don't know what's going to become of man in the future. Then we pass such judgments on creation. You know, like it's an illusion, it's an accident, it's a chance. Because we don't see what's going to come. Looking at the caterpillar, we say there can be no butterfly within. And Sri takes this analogy in the life divine that imagine when there was matter and if there was a witness and he asked God, what's happening here? He would have said, wait and watch. Out of this matter, living things will emerge. And he would have waited for a million years and said, you must be joking. <laughs> Not possible. <laughs> mountain is a mountain, rock is a rock, water is water. What do you mean by living? And then life came. And again, after a million years, he would have asked, now what? He would have said, wait and watch, man will emerge. And another millions of years, and he would have said, you must be joking. Yeah. And man emerged. And so we say that it, it can't be true. Superman, supramental being, fantasy is myths. And really speaking, it, it should be the most logical conclusion, at least to me. Before reading Shirobindo, it came as a very logical conclusion. Inevitable. The, inevitable. I said, if evolution has carried on till here, it has to go beyond. And if it does not go beyond, then it makes no sense. Nothing makes sense. So, you know, it's logical yeah. that from dust, if we can become man, then it's bound to whatever that power, that evolutionary force is there, is bound to carry us a step further. And there's that line of Sri Aurobindo. The supermental yes. is a thing decreed yes. and is in inevitable. the very nature of things inevitable. inevitable. Yes. Yeah. Well might interpret our mind's limited view existence as an accident Absolutely. in time. Quite naturally. It's like somebody sees a half finished, you know, when they make Durga's um, uh, idol. So if you, it takes almost a month, you know, they are making it all around. And if you were to go to a place after 10 days and you see stacks of hay tied in bundles and some mud here and there and you ask the person, what are you making? You would say Durga and say, don't be joking. And yet you have to wait. And if you were to, when we look at this world, half finished world, then it does hit us very hard. And we, regard, we think that existence is a freak, accident, is an accident in time, Sorry. illusion or phenomenon or freak. freak. The paradox of a creative thought which moves between unreal opposites. This used to be, again, that what kind of a creative thought is it that has yeah. made this creation? Unreal opposites. To the spirit, matter is unreal. To the materialist, 
spirit is unreal the two denials in life divine the denial of the ascetic and the denial of the materialist two unreal opposites so what kind of a creativity is this that it has created two poles and both are ignorant as if ignorant of each other inanimate force struggling to feel and know matter that chance to read itself by mind in conscience monstrously engendering soul this is how it looks to a limited view that somehow a soul people call it soul but it's nothing but foam and froth or a glandular secretion in the pineal gland or maybe it's nothing but beating of the heart and some people get very excited about it or a neurotransmitter in the brain which makes you say it's a soul there is no soul this is how the typical view from yeah. this end is even descartes said the pineal gland was the place yes yes <laughs> and so when shirobindo was told about it niroda said science says these days that you know pineal gland is the seat of the soul and it's located in the head and uh, so if you shoot a man through the head then his soul escapes so shirobindo says a long back i left this pot and i continue to be alive <laughs> long back i have left my head <laughs> <laughs> and i continue to be alive so you know some people who try to explain purely by material means at times all looks unreal and remote so then there is the other denial this is a denial where you deny the soul and say that matter is freak and gendering soul but there is another side of experience which denies this at times all looks unreal and remote we seem to live in a fiction of our thoughts pieced from sensations fanciful traveler's tale so basically we are living from sensation to sensation it's not really real it's my senses reporting and conjuring things the way we experience them there's no reality this is another outlook that this is just a stream of sensations there is no reality my senses are organized in such a way that i see hear touch taste smell and i create an image or a figure but what reality is well nothing it's a void just a play of energy which we cannot even experience that energy itself is unreal it's just something mechanical like you know going on dancing mm. so this is another or caught on the film of the recording brain a figment or circumstance in cosmic sleep so this is the other way those who go to the other pole not yet the highest where the reconciliation takes place the supramental but those who go into higher realms of the mind they think this world is a creation of a cosmic thought in sleep it's like when we dream we throw up images and when we wake up we say oh they were just images and dream so this is an explanation of the illusionist that this world is another kind of dream and when you wake up then you feel that it was really not real you believe it to be real but it's a very unsatisfactory explanation of course because then who is the dreamer who has dreamt it but that apart that will come later a somnambulist walking under the moon by the way i think moon is very close today so uh, please be beware beware <laughs> before i came i read a mail somebody saying you know i am feeling very restless moon is very near yeah, it's supposed uh, well, to be closest to the yeah, earth now, yeah. so. uh, earth suddenly starts craving for the moon but it's so near and yet it is not yet within its reach all that it can do is splash a little bit and that's what perhaps happens to little bit to all of us because something in us shares the earth matter yeah. and this 75% water so my explanation is very simple so just as the earth reaches out to the moon i it's very near and then it goes away and so it you know falls back yorbino <laughs> has so many lines with the moon however so that's many. the that's the poet uh, so somnambulist walking under the moon an image of ego treads through an ignorant dream counting the moments of a spectral time oh. this is the kind of experience when we draw into a little bit higher and inner ranges of the mind 
in a false perspective of effect and cause, Shobhinder reversed it. He reversed it, yes. <laughs> Instead of cause and effect. The effect and cause. We see the effect yes. and we surmise the cause. Yes. This is ignorance. So we start, we see an illness, we start wondering what is the cause. So initially people said it's because of the, you know, malaria. It came from that. Uh -huh. It's bad surroundings. Uh, then somebody said, no, no, it's not bad surroundings. The That mosquito poor mosquito <laughs> so not poor <laughs> not a good guy but <laughs> he is the mosquito so then <laughs> toward the end this Louis Pasteur who discovered the germ theory he went uh, full degree back and he went still deeper and he said it's not the uh, seed but the soil soil by that he meant the human nature ultimately now they say it's your own immune system you are surrounded by, you may be surrounded by the worst uh, physical surroundings. You may also be surrounded by the germs. And yet it's your own immune system. So, you know, we keep seesawing. And, and Mother speaks about the, um, the protective aura. Yes. So, uh, so we are us. seeing the effect yes. and surmising the cause. And then we say, why immunology? Then we'll say it's a state of consciousness. If we are in a beautiful state of consciousness, our immune system is strong enough to fight anything. So ultimately, it is the state of consciousness which determines. Yes. It's not that, you know, bacteria or germ or whatever. Or even a mosquito. <laughs> or even a mosquito. <laughs> so it's very interesting. But there is a false perspective of effect and cause. From the effect, we go, go, go. Then when we discover the cause, we have a reverse view. Oh, it was not outside us. It was within me. The cause is within me. And outside is just an effect. Yes. Right now we think the cause is outside and the effect is within. There is the mosquito, the germ outside and the effect is my body falls ill. But the real cause is within me and the effect is on the body which is outside. And even Shivindu goes on to say the circumstances of life in which you find yourself in. Sorry, the mother. One and the same. <laughs> it's because of your inner state and not the other way around. Very often people complain of their outer circumstances. And the mother says it's your inner consciousness that determines the outer circumstances. So if you want to change the circumstances, change your consciousness. If you don't change your consciousness, you may be in the best of outer circumstances and still you will become miserable. Story of Karna in Indian mythology and the other Pandavas. So Karna was born into a, you know, he belonged, a portion of the sun god, belonged to Kunti, you know, a royal empress, but discarded by her and, you know, she has gone, Karna has been, you know, grown up like an ordinary man. But then he grows up and he has the fortune of being taken up by the crown prince Duryodhana and given a kingdom. And yet, the paradox is he remains still miserable all his life. He's always competing with Arjuna. He's always feeling inferior. He's always suffering because of some kind of a wrong being done to him. But he doesn't realize that the secret of joy is not in beating an opponent outside, but in inner growth. Whereas on the other hand, we see Arjuna and Pandavas born into a royal family and they are outcast. They go through forests, they go through difficult times. But because of their state of consciousness, they discover happiness wherever they go. So, how much depends on our inner state? So, false perspective of effect and cause. People who blame outside circumstances, basically, they are saying we are bound. This is not empowerment. True empowerment is where we take responsibility of who we are and what we can become. Trusting to a specious prospect of world space. <laughs> specious, something which seems and is not. It's not something real. It drifts incessantly from scene to scene, whither it knows not to what fabulous words. We don't even know when we look at life from a, this small perspective. We just drift from scene to scene. Today and tomorrow and the day after and the weak and we don't know where this journey is leading us all here is dreamed or doubtfully exists 
but who the dreamer is and when she looks is still unknown or only a shadowy guess so seen from another perspective everything is a dream but who is the dreamer and why is he dreaming like this why these nightmares <laughs> so of course there is a uh, shubhendu will bring his pers- his final perspective these are all different perspectives the materialist the typical illusionist or the world is real but ourselves too small this mm. we never think mm-hmm. <laughs> or the world is real but ourselves too small insufficient for the mightiness of our stage so we sh- huddle up into a mass or we shrink into a small comfort zone we are frightened with the enormity of the world scene we are appalled by its vastness and we prefer to shut ourselves into a small house huddle around in a family where we feel safe comfort my type my kin my caste mm. my creed my religion <laughs> my <laughs> my people <laughs> but because you know it's too vast for us but the great are lonely the great are strongest when they stand and alone. alone yes sign of greatness is that a thin life curve crosses the titan world imagine world is a cosmos is a tremendous world of what energy is playing moving at what tremendous speed and our life is a thin life curve small little slice somewhere on the top thin life curve of the orbit of a soulless universe and in the belly of the sparse rolling mass a mind looks out from a small casual globe and wonders what itself and all things are here we see realism touched with irony there is a realism in it and yet there is a sense of irony man claims to know the stars look at it cas casual globe from which it is mind little peeps out imagine a caterpillar emerging out of the grass or the pond looking at us and saying hey i think i know you i understand you what would you say <laughs> you just smile perhaps that's how the divine feels amused and smiles at all over <laughs> you know. and when we get to the voice from below who says i've got yeah. the star yeah that's it so there that's what i meant <laughs> yes. that there is a touch of irony with realism yes <laughs> <laughs> and yet and now comes his master stroke and yet to some interned subjective sight that strangely has formed in matters sightless stuff a pointillage minute of little self takes figures as world beings conscious space point in a sharp point yeah and, and in painting you know it's the tiniest little dots that form the picture there is something in us which is somehow formed in matter yeah which can look at things differently the psychic and it's regarded you know so beautifully the upanishad speaks of it angusht matra purusha you know it is a being no bigger than the thumb of man yeah point it feels that no uses it yes, in savitry yes same a in being deep in a region of the heart ah, a being no bigger than the thumb of man in a hidden region of the heart so to that things appear different what does it see takes figure as world beings conscious base it just a kind of base for something else or some other drama such is our scene in the half light below this is the sign of matters infinite this is the weird purport of the picture shown to signs the giantess measurer of her field as she pours on the record of her close survey and mathematizes her huge external world measures and measures and measures this is irony again irony again <laughs> and all the numbers and end up with a sum and the infinite remains uncaught 
because infinite cannot be measured. You add any amount of numbers, trillions and trillions and trillions, but how do you capture infinity by mathematics? So this is where the science gets limited. To reason bound within the circle of sense. This is the problem of reason. We, we speak about reason as being the arbiter of truth. But reason depends on data and data depends on external evidence. And evidence depends on senses. And senses are grossly limited. So simple logic. Logic itself will tell us the limitation of logic. <laughs> my logic depends on the data. And my data depends on as they say, seeing, hearing, okay, not visible seeing by the gross eyes, electronic seeing, microscopic seeing, still a seeing. So it depends on that. Now when it depends, it becomes limited. So this is the problem of science and all reason. To reason bound within the circle of sense or in thoughts broad, Im now you know these are marvelous lines, very much suited to our Currency issue which mm. is going on. <laughs> <laughs> or in, see, credit card is here, stock market is here, everything should have been there. You see, or in thoughts, broad, impalpable exchange, you know. You see the stock exchange. It is there, you see nifty, this, there are figures. But what does it mean? Where is that money? It's impalpable. <laughs> it's impalpable. It's not in stock inside the stock exchange. <laughs> it's not there. And yet, you know, stock exchange. Oh, today I lost so much. Oh, today I gained so much. Why? Because the stock exchange. Look at The number said it. Number said it. <laughs> Impalpable exchange. You can't, you ask them that, you know, today I have got and millions. Can you give me? You go to the stock exchange. They say, no, it's not like that, sir. We don't have it with us. So, impalpable exchange. A speculator in tenuous vast ideas. Look at it. Speculation. Speculator. There it is. Oh, this could be true. And then we build a whole system of theories. Yeah. Abstractions in the void her currency. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was a man who had invested in shares. Mother was not in favor of shares, no. incidentally. Because she said, when you mutual funds are a different thing, by the way. But sheer cement, it's a speculation. Speculation means there is an artificial rise of things. And people do scams because of this. And so when you create a hill there or a mountain there, you create a ditch elsewhere. You know, it's a speculation. So people can play and manipulate. That's what happens with these markets. So, you know, it's uh, very interesting. He is using the word abstractions in the void her currency. So there was this man who had gone into shares and he must have bought some shares worth a few thousands. And as he grew older and older, you know, greed, okay, later on, later on, later on. But you know what happens? People with shares, they are very happy to see that their money is growing. <laughs> and most of the time, they never actually end up in cashing it. So it happened uh, to this man that he lost his head. So dementia, then he forgot everything. So he was uh, in nursing home and asking that, you know, when one day idli was served for a change, normally we have the dining room food. So he was telling us, you know, it's very expensive. How much is this idli? So we said, no, no, it's, it's gratis. It's, it's ashram. No, no, no. You tell me if it is 10 rupees, I can't pay because I don't have it. And you know how much his shares were worth? He didn't know about it. His shares had gone to 1.25 crores. 1 crore 25 lakhs, he had it on paper, which was valueless. It's like suddenly the old currency has become valueless, demonetized. <laughs> you believe that had value, but that did not have value. The value of a currency is when you spend it. This is what people don't understand. Stacking currencies of no value. And this is what it mother says when you circulate use it for the this simple lesson. It doesn't matter. It's not about income tax or this or that. Money must circulate. It's a force by its nature. It must circulate. Give it to someone. Spend it. Whatever. It's not about taxation at all. Taxation is of course important because you give it to your country. But they, it can be debated that you know it, in an ideal world there will be no taxation but voluntary contribution like Auroville. But leave that aside. 
डोंट स्टैक मनी लेट इट फ्लो देन यू गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ मनी अदरवाइज इट्स ए वॉइड योर करेंसी मेनी बुक्स ऑन पीपल डाई विथ लैक्स एंड क्रोड्स इन देर बैंक्स दे थिंक देर चिल्ड्रेन विल इनहेरिट येस एंड दे विल गो मैड so some of the today's generation children are smarter they spend it they say why why do you want to save it for but there was a mentality in a certain age where they stacking you see how that this part nobody is seeing yeah, actually very unconsciously this part is being hit and if you spend you improve the market you improve economy it's for everybody's good you help people spend it buy thing doesn't matter you want to buy your desires even that at least spend let it flow let it not get stacked yes. so here void because if it is stacked it's void you believe it's you know lacks but it's void it just in your mind that it is lacks it will be converted into lacks when you actually spend it which you may never do and therefore it was always void it was a piece of paper anyways <laughs> so here you know shubindo abstractions in the void her currency abstraction in the void oh my lakhs oh it has grown now you know i had 10 lakh shares now it has become 15 lakhs abstractions in the void that number has no meaning at all <laughs> we know not with what firm values for its base tomorrow it may just be reduced to yeah. nothing firm values we know not and then he comes to only of course he is referring here to the thought world not to yeah. the share market but look at the way shurbindu can use a most common place symbol you know people have you when in poetry they use symbols like you know mountains and rivers and nature mm. at places he is used you, you you remember that printing press and everything yes, yes. related to that as a symbol and, and look here we have exchange yes. currency values bankruptcy within S a few lines speculator speculator <laughs> all connected to economics but he has transformed these into a deeper vision yes. the bank bankruptcy of thought which plays with ideas speculates on god is or god is not fixes denominations my god is greater than your god but at the end of the day it's valueless yes. we don't know what for value at its base and that's why he says only religion in this bankruptcy you see it will not stop here presents its dubious riches to our hearts invest in gold <laughs> only religion in this bankruptcy yeah. <laughs> my gold is 18 carats no 24 carats everybody claims isi certified nobody knows you know people buy it <laughs> but this so, is a very interesting thing yeah, about now you see religion and yes. presenting dubious and riches and still it goes further or signs unprovisioned checks yes. on the beyond we are. so you go to one religion they will say okay if you come to this religion i am signing a check that you will get a seat in heaven it is very lucrative so you take that check so after death when you go there you present it sir i have to go to heaven what who has signed oh the priest it doesn't matter torn and thrown off sir please sir i was promised <laughs> like people are given visas to travel to gulf countries yeah. that you will get a lucrative job recently i read this oh, you yes. know it's very frightening and i know personally uh, our maid servants <clears throat> husband and this is pretty common that you know you'll get a lucrative job lot of money in the gulf and many of them are lured into it they spend lakhs of rupees they go there and they become slave to some sheikh who will use them like a slave there was a man who was given meal only once a day and that too left over from his camel's feed and if he did not listen to him and do the work of you know mowing the grass and watering it he would get whip lashes and in addition other unspeakable things somehow he managed to you know uh, get hold of some means of communication his phone everything passport is taken away and got in touch with the ministry of external affairs and and i have heard such stories real stories they are horrifying unprovisioned checks just because somebody has told you and we are so gullible oh my baba ji says you will get nirvana definitely after this life promised what do i have to do become his disciple that's it 
So there is a disciple hunting. Each disciple brings a bag full of money. So Babaji grows richer and the disciple lives with that in term in return of my money. He has signed a check into the beyond. So religion is not just formal religions, but all the sects and cults which thrive on this promise. Yes. Unprovisioned checks on the beyond. But after death, you may see some other, you may see the truth which is very, can be shocking. Our poverty shall there have its revenge. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, you know, people feel satisfied. That doesn't matter if we are poor here. There, because I belong to this religion, this cult, this sect, there I am going to be treated in the royal, as a royal guest in Indra's hall. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> after death, if you die blasting people, suicide bombing and things like that, I am not mentioning <laughs> where it is mentioned, but I am sure people are well informed enough to know. Then it is promised that in heaven you will get 70 virgins. Look at what a gross true, what a gross thing it can be. And people buy into that argument. <laughs> Better you have 70 here, but spare others the, de the, the death knell. Why you have to kill people? But look at, you know, people believe it. And they do such things which are so horrifying. And human mind, that yes. this is the little life. Yes. Our poverty shall there have its revenge. Our spirits depart, discarding a futile life. This oh. is futile. Not realizing that there is God's purpose in us. Into the blank unknown or with them take death's passport into immortality. As long as I am living, I cannot discover immortality. This is nonsense. We can discover immortality here. We are not talking right now about the physical immortality. The consciousness of immortality. Which the Vedic Rishi is discovered. The psychic immortality. Which the seers and mystics and saints discover. We can discover that we are immortal. And yes, if we can extend this immortality into the physical through transmutation, that's a different thing. Yes, we can. But that's not what immortality is being referred to here. We believe this life will remain imperfect and the only immortality is that we die and then we say, Sir, we have left this futile world and my religion stamped here and now please allow me the gate pass to immortality. So this is the... In the mother's flower messages, there are so many flowers that she has yeah. named Impact. Conscious vital immortality, yes, physical yes, immortality. Yes. And when you read her comments. Yes. Wow. So it's amazing. Just a couple of lines, then we stop. So that, you know, we Lead take a into, leap into yes, yes. what's going to come. So that, <laughs> well, this is not everything. Right. This is the view when we look at life. Standing yeah. on the little life and speculating with all kinds of thought. But that's not the truth. Yet was this only a provisional scheme. A false appearance sketched by limiting sense. Mind's insufficient self-discovery. An early attempt, a first experiment. This kind of a thought, this kind of speculation, this kind of a living. This was a toy to amuse the infant earth. But knowledge ends not in these surface powers that live upon a ledge in the ignorance and dare not look into the dangerous depths or to stare upward, measuring the unknown. So we should not think that this is the ultimate view that religions and sects and cults and illusionists and this materialist and the scientists are offering to us. We should not end up believing. Science also become a cult that this is the ultimate. There is a greater beyond but for that we have to, to use a line from Savitri. To you it is given to the earth boundaries. To you it is given to cross the dangerous spaces of the soul and touch the mighty mother 
stark alive and discover the million bodied one this is given to us that will come subsequently so we finished with the provisional scheme provisional thank god, <laughs> thank <laughs> it's, god. it's 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 fun yes, thank god it's fun when you look at it from another perspective but it's very harrowing mm. to those who have chosen to tie themselves into a scheme it can be very very harrowing but people love to tie themselves that is the paradox this is such a great liberating thought but people love to tie themselves to their littleness and their little religions and their little cults and their little thoughts i don't know why and their little problems problems and this is a great mystery why spell of nature spell of ignorance